Wildfire in the far west. In the Rockies. Along the Atlantic coast. Three wildfires. Each in a different part of the country. All of different origin. Of different size. Each requiring different tactics. but they all have one thing in common. They challenge man. Man against fire. Notify the smoke jumper base right away. Okay, we're on our way. Oz and Cheney, suit up. Oz and Cheney, suit up. Smoke jumpers, rugged and ready. When a fire breaks out in backcountry, here are the men who fight the flame. And they've got to reach remote places, safe. Smoke jumping is a skill that's not easily won. Far from it. Weeks of intensive training under demanding leadership toughen a man for the job. His diploma, the real McCoy. The only quick roads to the fire below are by air. Hence, smoke jumpers, hopefully getting to the fire before it becomes too big. There are hundreds of these dedicated stalwart men stationed in the western United States, guardians of our forests. Can they handle the fire? A few minutes will tell. fire. Add blazing timber to midsummer heat and you're at the hinges of hell. But wildfire can often be tamed before it gets out of hand. Luck has something to do with it. Land lies flat, wind is down. And man has a fighting chance to beat the devil to the draw. But more than luck, skill. The skill a smoke jumper brings to the job. Mastering a fire demands more than muscle. It takes a technique and talent all its own. Speed and thoroughness, that's how man works best against fire. And yes, one extra point for stamina. The fire might look like it's out, but every fireman knows embers can't be trusted until they're dead out. 
the night-long vigil gives them the answer. Morning, July 18th. Jumpers Cheney and Hawes report. Wildfire at Devil's Flats, dead out. Earnest men saw their duty, and a forest lives on. A forest where timberlands continue to grow. Waters trickle and cascade. Wildlife runs free and nests high. Yes, a forest lives on, thanks to determined, courageous men who put out a fire in good time. But the mysteries of fire still frustrate man. Lifting the lid of mystery are Forest Service fire research scientists. They use specially equipped fire laboratories to study fuel, pine needles, forest debris. How does fuel respond to its environment? What is its chemistry? What makes it flammable? Fuel is a complicated business. So is the research in developing a true understanding of it. What about firefighting chemicals? How can chemicals be used best to slow down or stop fire in forest fuels? The performance of different chemicals is determined in fire laboratory experiments. How does fire spread? In a combustion laboratory, fires are used to determine the mechanisms and rate of fire spread. From laboratory scale to field scale, the violence of the mass fire system is studied and its behavior is measured and analyzed. Through research, the forest comes to the lab and the laboratory goes to the forest. What about lightning, the major cause of forest fires in the West? Fire scientists have developed instruments to identify fire-setting lightning strikes. Special weather modification techniques are being tested. Someday, man may be able to prevent lightning-caused fires. Wherever man needs help in his battle of the plane, a research project is in the works. And while the eyes of research look to the sky for new answers, Sky Watch goes on, looking for new fires, searching for the first sign of smoke. Wherever there's smoke, there's fire. Yes, but sometimes it's legitimate and under control. A campfire, debris burning. But the one down there in Melton Branch, is it legitimate or is it wildfire? Make it from 8 Tango. Signal to lot 77, south of Arganza. Eight Tango from Macon. How many units do you think you'll need? Two units. Eight Tango out. 10-4, K1B, 803 out. Wildfire has its source in many an evil. The careless smoker, a faulty power line, or someone starts a fire and leaves it. visitors to the forest, here for good hunting, until Look over here, Dad. I wonder what he's up to. A second smoke, so close to the first, the pilot has reason to wonder. Is it arson? Another signal, too. Quarter mile down the road. Eight tango out. 10-4, K-1-B. 8-0-3 out. Here. Making 60 from 8-tango. Take your next left. 
10-4, make it 60 out. Eight tango out. Trucks and tractors are guided by the pilot. This minimizes the time it takes equipment to reach the scene of the wildfire. A responsible citizen and the machinery to capture an arsonist is sparked. Georgia tag 23 Robert 1875, vehicle headed west on Melton Road. Subject suspected of starting fires. Repeat, be on the lookout for a green 1959 Chevrolet pickup truck. Georgia tag 23 Robert 1875. 1959 Chevrolet pickup truck. Georgia tag 23 Robert 1875. A third smoke. Three fires along the same road. We have the sure pattern of the arsonist. Third signal two. Half mile down the road from second fire. These are being deliberately set. I'm going down for a closer look. Eight tango out. 10-4, K-1B, 803 out. The pilot zones in on the arsonist and points the finger. Megan from 8 Tango, Green Chevrolet pickup leaving third fire. Contact our fire investigator. <laughs> Report to Milton Road. 10-4. Investigation and enforcement work side by side with fire control. of the end now in sight for the arsonist, the pilot has still another responsibility. To direct his attention to the three fires which have become one to destroy a forest. Its resources. The life savings of homeowners. Even human life. A senseless act demands sensible action. The battle against wildfire is on. behind the track. Waging the battle takes cooperation. Units and men from the township, the state, private industry, and county. They all have a stake. They all pitch in. Track to two from Fireboss. Build your line till you meet Melton Road. Direct tractors on west flank of fire. 10-4. Tractor 6 from 8 Tango. There's a pond just ahead of you. Take the right side. What makes an arsonist behave the way he does? The thrill of striking a match? spectacle of firemen in a challenging battle, sometimes a grudge, a desire to get even. Who can say for sure? The line to Milton Road now completed. 10-4. Looks like we've got it under control. makes an arsonist? The motives are many. That's why the statistic. Arsonists start one-third of our nation's fires. A big problem. Today, fire researchers study human behavior to find the answers. In the fight of man against firebug, 
cooperation from forest visitors is a big help too. A mighty big help. Sometimes wildfire, especially in the West, truly lives up to its name. This one's been licking at the eastern slopes of the Cascades for well on to 24 hours. By midday, high winds turn fire against man. He's gone over the hill on the east flank. We've lost him. He's out of hand. Call for help, men respond from over a dozen states. Veteran Indian crews leave the southwest to fight a fire 1,300 miles to the north. A fire that also needs fresh suppression crews, men experienced in fire management, and material by the tons to back them up. I'm Doug Maxwell, fire boss, on my way to take over down there. And it's a tough one. By now called Canyon Creek Fire. Already 10,000 acres of blackened timber. Three miles out, I look over my responsibility. When, where will we stop it? It's gonna take know-how, strategy. The strategy will work out here in the fire camp. First off, I'm briefed. I learned the number of men already out on the line, what equipment's up front, and that more is on the way. A campaign fire is just like war, and war, as we all know, is grim. Okay, what's the weather picture? Based on this afternoon's condition and tomorrow's forecast, my plans chief brings the fire map up to date. It tells me at a glance the present fire edge and where it'll be by morning. Okay, now we, uh, My line boss and I agree. By midnight, the fire should begin to calm down. Now, if we can just build our control lines in the morning and connect them before 3 p.m., the heat of the day, we stand a good chance of gaining the upper hand if we can hold the lines. This is a long... As I said, the fire is a mighty big one, so we got to split it up into two zones. Each zone has its own boss, and I keep close contact with both of them. Camp's buzzing. Equipment's got to be kept sharp, in tune, ready to go back out on the line. Today's frozen meals, a few hands can turn out a barrel full of dinners in no time. It's important for the men to have their chow, piping hot, refrigerator cold. The roadblocks will tell the public the bad news. Recreation areas are closed, maybe burnt out. nightfall. The work goes on. So does the fire. Will it quiet down? Or will wind or low humidity keep it spreading all night? Zone 2 meets at 9 p.m. The zone is divided into three parts, divisions. Divisions 1 and 2 are handline shows. Division three is a tractor show. Now completing the line between divisions two and three by noon and holding that line during the heat of the day, that's gonna be the big job. Well, we're in luck. The Canyon Creek fire calms down, but our work doesn't. 4 a.m., big day lies ahead. 
I hold the morning briefing. The idea behind it is to communicate to every level. In other words, if we don't all get the message, we're in trouble. Can't afford to miss a trick. What's the revised weather forecast? Wind speed, direction, the humidity. Where are the hot spots going to be? Will all our forces be in the right place at the right time? And I can't stress safety for our crews too much. We don't want a casualty list. Yes, our objective goes pretty much without saying. Put the fire out quick as we can. Point is, we must all see eye to eye on how to do it best. Not enough men in zone two? More tractors than hoes for zone one? We thrash it all out until the plan feels solid to everybody around the table. Men of Forest Service and other federal organizations, local, county, state, total cooperation. the men move out. Bloggers, mill crews, volunteers, people from town, military men, you name it. And they take with them today's training and technology. Yes, technology. For instance, the details of a fire are hard to see at night or through thick smoke. Used to be a problem, but isn't anymore. Fire research has developed an airborne electronic scanning system. It can detect small fires and map big ones. It electronically senses details of the fire. The fire's location, size, its perimeter, its direction of spread. Seconds later, a photo of these fire details is airdropped. And headquarters gets the picture. The big picture. Actually, in this area... Reinforcements continue pouring in. It's a mighty battle of men and machines. A battle that can take many directions. And does. The fire line gets hacked out. For some of these men, it's their baptism of fire. This cup trench will catch rolling embers cool them down. More men to fill the division's needs. Bad news. Wind's up to 15 mile an hour now, with peak gusts of 25. That could mean trouble. Might have to change our strategy. One thing's for sure, we must widen the line and clear out the fuel. Firefighting needs water. Water needs equipment. We use fire retardant chemicals, too. To help the men in their battle, helicopters and fixed-wing aircraft knock down hot spots with retardant drops. up in the wind made the flames spread faster. So now we do have to change our tactics. No use giving up. We'll concentrate on hot spots and try to hang on to our lines. It's pressing our men. Pressing them hard. It's a case of redirecting our crews and being sure to hold the line. 
so I've got to talk over the changes with the boss of Division Three. We agree on the new tactics. The chips are down. Men of Division Three try to hold up their end of the exhausting battle. Canyon Creek Fire claims a community, along with its playground. Ten. Make the drop west of that. strategy works. At last, we strangle the fire. We've got control now, but we've got to be sure. We snuff out and mop up. And as quickly as we mobilize for a campaign fire, we demobilize to a skeleton crew. Meanwhile, it's time for me to move on. Report that we're on our way. The blood and sweat and grief of some thousand men. The strategy, they did the job. KOE 823 from Fire Boss Maxwell, leaving Canyon Creek. You know, it's good to see green again.